first thing we're going to do to put the rear wheel together is to uh, lubricate the adjuster. And put some never sees on the thread and we'll wind it in. all the way in to the bottom. Then we'll take the, one of the legs and we'll put a bit of grease on that to turn that around so that the slot's there for the bolt. Again, we put the slot towards the, where the bolt goes in. Now we're going to put the seal on the shaft. This just keeps a water type seal, keep the dirt out. So we're going to put the bolts for the adjuster in through the big hole, drop them down, put them through the holes that they locate. We're going to do the same with this other one. It's very tight and awkward. We'll do that. Now we're going to have to offer the adjuster in and try not to lose all of this. Once you get the bolt started, hold the adjuster towards you and uh, it allows you to get the wrench past the bolt head and work both bolts so that uh, you don't pull it in too tight and can't get on, on the opposing bolt. On the rear drum, the uh, expander is fully floating. So we don't worry about centralizing the adjuster. We're merely going to tighten it up and allow the fully floating expander to, to move to centralize the shoe. So we'll go all the way with this. We need to put the handle on the adjuster and the locking nut, and we'll do that now. So we've locked that. So we're now ready to put the expander in. So we'll pass the linkage through the hole, and we'll push our rubber seals through. Away. and then we'll pick up the hole. Now we've got to get our Thackeray washers on. We'll need the aid of a magnet at this point. And we've got to put a flat washer on. Like so. Now we've got to get the nut on. So you get the nuts on, and we're going to tighten them up. As I said, you've got the Thackeray washers, and this is fully floating. This moves up and down all the time, so it self-centers. We're going to pull them in, and the Thackeray washer will give us our movement. So we just pull them up till they're snug, and then we have to put our split pins in. Push those in. Now we'll take a small screwdriver and we'll bend out one leg. Once you've got your split pins bent, that'll complete that part of it. So we're going to put the rubber seals onto the rod or onto the expander and the rod. You have to work past the gator. The groove on the expander at that point. Now we'll take our rubber cover. So we've got the water excluder in the groove on the expander, and we've got the rubber cover, the rod. A water excluder into the groove on the knurled nut. 
Before we can set up the rear brakes, we need to take the compensator rod out that goes to the servo indirectly. So we'll take this pin out and then we'll be able to set up the adjustment in the drums correctly. Now we have that one off, what we can do is we'll put our expander rod back in. Pins are nice and long, make them easy to bend. With that done, we're now ready to put our shoes on inside the drum and then we'll uh, adjust everything before we put this rod back on. So we'll put the spring in the shoes on those two holes there. We'll lubricate the post for the linkage. And then we'll put our linkage on. Move the uh, half shaft to get the nuts out of the way. So now we'll take the shoes and we'll put them on the put it on the bottom adjuster first. And now we're going to look at our linkage and lift the shoe and place it into the adjuster. We got a little bit of a twist there. We'll just push that around like so. And bring this up like so. This allows us to bring the linkage into play, into that area there. So our pins will go in that one. That's in there. Then the clips to hold the pins in. Go in there, then we'll put our clip, our bolt in our clip. We'll tighten the two bolts up. So we'll put our spring on and work the uh, hook through the line, through the shoe, and we'll bring it up over our peg, like so. So now we're ready to put the drum on. Get ourselves nicely central, like so. We'll put our hubcap holder on. Just line up the screws. going to do now is adjust up the free play. If we'll adjust up the brakes till they no longer move and then we will release the star adjuster until we have free running. We'll do the same on the other side and then adjust our compensator rod to give us no free play. Okay now we need to adjust this compensator rod to give us no free play at this end. We've actually taken a lot of play out by adjusting the brakes and we're going to have to let it back a little bit and I think that's it. So we need to take as much free play out as we can and we'll put the pressure forwards on the rod. So yes, that's us. 
and we pin this up and we lock up our lock nut you can see how much free play we got rid of at the drum improve our pedal travel and that's the compensator rod adjusted have your assistant pump the lever forwards and wait till the bubbles clear from the bottle pumping until the bubbles disappear. Just keep pumping until the uh See a movement of fluid and then you'll ask your assistant to hold the lever forwards. We'll close the nipple and that brake is now bled. We'll go and do the same thing on the other side and that will bleed the hydraulic system. If you are planning to rebuild the master cylinder as part of your project, you must bleed the brakes after you have completed the rebuilding and installation. So we're going to remove the master cylinder. The first thing we're going to do is remove the hydraulic fitting from the front of the master cylinder. So we'll do that first. You can't really get too much each turn, so it takes a little while to uh, wind the fitting all the way out. We are out of there. So what we'll do is we will pull the cylinder off the pipe rather than trying to pull the fitting out along the pipe because it's seized up. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to remove the bolts that go through the bracket and the master cylinder and we're going to remove the bolts that hold the bracket to the chassis. So we're going to uh, loosen the bolts off and uh, pull them out of the master cylinder. And after we get those out, we'll move on to the bolts that hold the bracket to the chassis. Okay, so we'll remove the last bolt. And then we'll go on and take the bolt out of the bracket at the front here. It is a nut in the bolt so we'll get a wrench on behind to hold the head of the bolt. So we're going to remove the bracket that holds the rod that goes forward to the servo just to get it out of the way and allow us to drop the bracket. So we've got a couple of 2VA nuts and bolts there. So we'll take the second the two bolts down, slide that bracket out of the way. We can just slip the nut on there for, for now so that we don't have to fight the bolt out between the master cylinder push. So we're going to remove the through bolt that supports the actuating rod.
This is going to release the bracket and allow us to release the master cylinder from the pipe and the push rod. We've slid that off the fitting and now we're going to slide the master cylinder off the push rod and that's the master cylinder down. We're going to now remove the servo. These two rods go up to the servo and are joined to the master cylinder actuating lever here and this is the bolt we're going to remove. We take the nut off and then we're going to have to push the bolt out. And that's going to allow us to pull the arm off there. The next thing we're going to do is remove this panel, this under tray. Um, it's just held on by four quarter bolts. We'll slip those out. Take the last one out. Drop the panel. That gives us access to the securing bolt that holds the uh, servo to the transmission. The next thing we've got to do is remove these bolts that hold the clevis pins in on the two arms. So we'll do that. Yeah. Let's take a screwdriver and slip it under the slot. Gives you a little bit of leverage to pull the pin out. You get a bit sticky over a period of time. That will release the bottom and that allows us to see the bolt that secures the, the top rod on the uh, So we'll slip the uh, other pin out. That allows us to remove the rods. So we're going to remove the split pins from the brake pedal rod and the rod to the compensator, which causes the activation of the servo. To do this, we have to remove these two cotter pins or split pins. And this is extremely difficult because of their location and the way that they're in. These two pins are actually in incorrectly. This pin to the outside of the car is correct and the other one should be facing the engine. The split pin should be on the engine side. For now we've just got to struggle to get these two split pins out and we use anything we can to get them out because of their tight location. So we managed to get one leg out. We managed to get that out now. Okay so we're going to pull out the inside split pin like so. Now we're going to have to push the pins out. Can you let the pedal go, Dan? Thanks. That's it. So what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to loosen the lock nuts on the servo because the inner pin won't come out and this will give us more travel at that point and allow us to spread those enough to get that second pin out. With two wrenches we're going to use the scissor grip and squeeze them together. That loosens the lock nut and that will allow us to undo the outside nut like so and then loosen the inside nut and that in turn will allow the other rod to come forward enough so we'll push that push the clevis pin out and that frees up our servo there so now we'll take this 3-8 bolt out of the end 
which will take the servo off the gearbox. So we'll do that now. We'll pull the bolt right out. And we'll wiggle the servo off the pins. You can see the pins up there. Take it forwards. Now you want to be very careful at this point not to damage the cover, the spring cover on the pins that stick out. So it takes a little bit of maneuvering, especially with this one because the engine's out and the uh, servo and the gearbox are a little tight to the chassis. We managed that there, we didn't have any damage, and that's the servo down. This of course would not be the normal situation when you take a master cylinder off a car that has been used on a daily basis, but many of you may encounter a car that sat for a good long time and want to bring it back to life. So what I have did, as you saw it previously, is I took the fitting out and I sprayed some penetrating oil and let it sit for a few minutes. And I've put pressure by using a soft punch on the top and I'm aiming to push the piston out to the point that we can get the innards out. We really do want to save the master cylinder. Because with a, with a new sleeve in it and perhaps the valve that I'm pushing on changed. This, this can be come back to life and be a useful piece of equipment again. Now we're, we're winning, we're nearly out now, so I'll keep... You can see that the spring is still pushing me back inside, so I have to push on that to get it to come out. So what we've managed to do there, you can see, is we've pushed the piston out. A, a rubber seal used to be here, and what it's done is changed into a grease-like substance, or a tar. So we'll continue to pull it out if we can. That's the piston. It's still, it's still in reasonably good shape, uh, nothing too bad. We'll clean it up and see, see what we get, but that's still a useful item. So you can see what the cup washer should have been. We push the spring and the cup seal and the metal plate out. You can see our pounding put a, put a bit of a tweak in the spring, but certainly not too much damage and we managed to get that all out. We'll change that spring out. There's a valve in the end that I was talking about and we've pounded that a bit, but we can find another one of those. And this was used to be a, a cup washer. And that that was a seal, that's the valve, and that's how that uh, master cylinder comes apart. In a normal situation, this would have just come out, floated out once we took the clip out. But there, all the pieces are there, and when we put the sleeved master cylinder kit together, you'll see how it all, how it all turns out. And that's the master cylinder stripped. We're going to clean this up, as I said earlier. We'll glass bead it, uh, send it out for cab plating, and then get the sleeve put in it, and then it'll be as good as new. This is a servo with the original clip. You can see the spring there and the cover over the dust release. So we're going to slip this off. Like so. As I say, you can see that the, the dust release there. This, of course, is also an oil trap, and. I'm not sure that we'll leave that open when we put it back together, but I'll show you that on the assembly. And we don't want to be too tough on it because we don't want to uh, damage the uh, cover. The covers are very expensive and we want to obviously save it if at all possible. Um, somebody's uh, quite likely glued it on there. That's uh, using a Bostic arrangement was uh, one of the things they did. I'm going to have to put a bit of pressure on it. Again, as I say, we want to be pretty gentle because we don't want to lose the cover. So we'll ease that off, like so. 
You know, it's a good, good old-fashioned servo lining covered in oil. So this is all covered in oil. You can see that there. I want to take that out of there. Put that down. Now we're going to take the servo apart. I'm going to take this. I'm going to slip it in the vise to hold on to it. And then we're going to uh, disassemble the mechanism. Hold it there. We're going to take the nuts. As you remember, we loosened the lock nut to spread these to get the cotter pins out. Take the two nuts off. Another nut. The washer. And then we'll take this out. Now this has three balls in it, or should have three balls in it. You can see the three balls inside there, which it should be. Then we'll take the race out. Lay that, and we'll lay that down there. Next we'll take the, the race cover out. Put that there. And we're going to take the two arms. Let's take the first one. And on here, you can see this has a wavy washer. This was a modification. This wavy washer was a modification to stop the arms sticking together. Take the other arm off. Take the inner race out. Then we've got a felt inside a cup washer. There's a servo plate. And there's the shaft. And that's all the pieces that are included in the servo. What we're going to do with this piece is we're going to clean the grease, degrease it, and we'll uh, clean it off. And then we'll glass bead it, and we'll send that out for CAD plating. So we're going to remove the uh, oily servo lining from the servo plate. Um, we do the uh, <coughs> bang it in the center. That allows us to turn around and find the rivets. So we'll put it on the set of rivets. And we'll knock the heads off with the drill. <coughs> so we'll move around. You only want to take the heads off. You don't want to be drilling the, the steel fingers in this case. So you, you want to relieve enough pressure that we can push the rivets out, but not to drill the, the fingers inside. Go around to the next set. I keep close attention to how much rivets left, and we'll go round to the last three. <coughs> when we've done that, we'll go to the vise, and we'll tap them through, but we'll support the finger as best we can so that the pressure is only on the rivet. Take a taper punch. All the time keeping the support on the finger because you'll bend it off or break it. I'll explain that to you when we get the plate off. So you can see there that these little fingers are riveted to the plate. And if you didn't support that very carefully when you're beating on them, you could easily tear that out. So that was why I kept saying support them. So you can see this is a later version type servo plate. It's fine. It was de developed to give you a little more cushion, a little more give when the uh, pressure goes in. If you have a solid plate, that's fine. You just use 
whichever one you've got. And uh, that completes the uh, disassembly of the server. So we're now going to rebuild the master cylinder. We've uh, <coughs> had the master cylinder sleeved, the cab plated and sleeved, and now we're ready to put it back together. First thing we're going to do is rebuild this valve. The valve's the first thing to go into the master cylinder, and it's made up of two seals. We have to get this uh, cup arrangement into the groove at the bottom of this valve, which is a little bit tricky. And to uh, help us a bit, we're going to use a bit of rubber grease. This grease actually comes in uh, uh, the more modern cars, the silver cloud master cylinders, but uh, it's quite useful um, and it will make our job a little easier. So we'll lubricate the uh, edge of this up. We put that in like so. We're going to take a punch and see how well we do. Well, we did pretty good. You can see we've got almost all of it in except one little bit and I think it'll go in. And you can see it's in there completely now. I was quite lucky, you might have to work quite a bit at that. So now we're going to put this uh, seal on the valve. That goes in the groove. Again, you've got to work it in. They used to supply these valves complete rebuilt. So if you, could, if you do run into an old uh, kit, you may very well have a new valve in there, but they don't come like that anymore. And we've pushed that all the way in, a little bit more there. You can see that's all the way in. This actually goes on the end of the spring like so. So we can put that into the cylinder. Next thing to go into the cylinder is the cup. This is the cup seal. The cup goes in onto the uh, spreader that we just put in. And we'll lubricate the rubber. We'll put that in. Making sure it stays that way. You can see that there. The next thing we put in is this washer, like a Belleville washer arrangement. What that does is it stops the seal sticking to the piston. But before we put the piston in, we're going to put the seal, the seal that goes in at the end. Use that over the large part of the seal. Get down. You can see we've got to get it up over that groove. Might need a bit of a screwdriver to assist us to take that over. Just work it around. see that's right in that groove. We'll uh, put a bit of lubrication, a bit of rubber grease on there, like so, to help us put it in. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to have to push it down because the washer and the clip are what's going on next. And uh, Probably need something that will get, get you to the bottom of the piston. So we're not going to get it in as easily as we might. We're going to have to get the lip into the uh, cylinder. What I'm doing is pushing the edge of the seal. down, which you can see I've done. Now I've got to do a bit of a trick shot because I've got to hold the piston down and get the washer 
and the clip. I'm going to give myself a little more room if I can. I'm going to put one end of this in. I'm going to try and work it around now to get the other section in, which is quite a feat on your own. I got very lucky there, managed to get it in. You can see that that's in the groove. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to check that the uh, piston goes up and down freely, which it does. And now I can put in the plug and the fitting in the end. So we make sure we've got the copper washer on the fitting. We put that in the master cylinder. Seal that up. Now the uh, rubber dust cover needs to go on the back end of the uh, cylinder. And then the, the rod that pushes, which is still on the car, goes in there. And that's us pretty well ready to uh, put it on the car. We're now ready to rivet the servo lining onto the servo plate. As I mentioned in the strip down, there's uh, two different types of plates, so you use two different lengths of rivets. For this one with the fingers, you use a shorter rivet, and the one with no fingers, you use a longer rivet. We've got the short rivets for this job, and we're going to put a rivet in the uh, lining, and we just drop that into there, put that in, push that into there, We've got a punch in the vise. We support that like so. And it helps if you've got something there just to support that. Gives you good uh, control. You heard the uh, note change, the sound change, so we knew we were tight enough. Do the next one. Feel that note change again. That's that. So we're going to get the spring off. Go around to the next one. The notes changed, and that's all nine rivets in there, and that completes that process of uh, riveting on the servo lining. We're now going to uh, flatten the servo plate and uh, put the servo together or rebuild the servo. You can see here that one of these plugs is sticking out a bit. For demonstration purposes, I've left a plug sitting out a little bit there. This servo plate had two holes that allowed or would have allowed oil to go right into the servo plate. And in an effort to stop it, I've pushed in a couple of stainless steel plugs to block it off. I've found them with corks in them. I've found them with pieces of wood driven into them. But whatever you decide to do, you need to, to block those holes up if you have holes there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this in the vise and squeeze that in the rest of the way. Uh, depending on what facilities you have, you can decide what you want to do for your thing. So that pushes that in flush, and that uh, solves the, uh, any potential oil leak problem we may have. And I'm going to put this in the vise, and I'm going to show you how to flat the servo. This is the, the surface at which the servo lining runs. And the servo is just a clutch, 
and it's a clutch that pulls the master cylinder on. As you probably are aware, you have no direct contact with the master cylinder. When you press your foot on the brake, the rod goes to the servo, squeezes the arms, and pushes the lining against this surface. The rotation of the servo causes the master cylinders to be pulled on. So we need to have a good surface here, a good flat surface that will pull that clutch on and give you a good break. So what I do is I take a bit of emery cloth, take a full sheet, and I tear it into strips and I use it on a file. So I lay that under the file like so, and then I just, keeping it flat, I work my way around the plate. Generally there's marks in them. This, uh, this one is particularly flat. I guess it may very well have been flat, flatted before it was sent for CAD plating. Sometimes these surfaces have chrome plate. There was a time that a good number of these were plated with a hard chrome. Uh, what we do is we strip the hard chrome off and uh, then go back to the steel and this gives you a good surface. It allows you a good uh, area and we'll just work our way around here you can see we're almost all the way round at that area there you can still see it's a, a bit shiny so we'll give that a little bit more We've worked our way all the way around the disc, got a nice surface all the way around, and we're now going to uh, assemble the rest of the servo. And we're now going to build the servo motor. We'll put the shaft in the vise for support. We'll take the plate, we'll pop that over the top. We take our cup washer. So we take some grease and we'll uh, lubricate the felt washer and we'll put it in our cup washer. And we put the felt down first, drop that over there. So we'll centralize that, push that in. And then going to take our bearing, our inner bearing cover. We put that in. That's going to take a little bit of a tap. So we take our soft hammer. You can see that rolls in there nice and easy, goes round and round. Then we'll take our, our race, and I'm going to pack that full of grease. I'll squeeze it right through the balls there, you can see the old grease coming out, which is a good thing. We want grease all the way through it. We're going to plop that over the top. Push that down. We're going to take an arm. Use a little bit of grease inside there. Spread it around. Drop that over. Then we're going to take our wavy washer. A little bit of grease on that. Get our other arm. Same procedure. And over there. We're going to take our outer race. Put that. We're going to have to tap that. Just again, same proceed. Let's get it started. Take 
that all the way home. Still allows that to move. Take out full race. and push some grease in the sides of the balls. Touch more. Put that over there. We take one of the, the activating arms and it's the one with the uh, groove in the back. We put that on there. We're going to put the grease on all of those ramps to hold the balls. You can see the ramp there. And at the base of each one of those ramps, we'll put the ball. before we put that on there, spin that back and forth, make sure there's no lumps in and that's good. So we'll just put that on there in the right position. We'll put that down and that's that part. So we're going to put the, the washer and the two nuts, the adjusting nut and the locking nut on the shaft. And you need to make sure for the purposes of fitting the servo to the transmission or the gearbox, that this is flush at this point here. You can see that there's no thread sticking out there. And we nip that up tight like that so it doesn't twist. This gives us the option of turning this when we're fitting it to the car because that turns that and allows us to pick up the pins on the transmission. We then take our servo lining and plate, we put that on there. You can see when I rotate the bottom or the top plate, the holes have to line up for the pins. So those, those two sets of holes have to be in line when we put it on the pins on the transmission. If you only get the first set of holes, which is in the plate, the servo will fall off. So it's essential that you do that. So then we take our cover, our spring cover, and I'll just show you a, a test there for this to make sure it's in good shape. If these get damaged or bent in or something, they are a crucial part of the uh, operation of the servo because when they push down, they push the servo away from the plate, the servo lining from the plate. So they must be in good shape. They, don't, they mustn't have any holes in them or gouges or kinks. So we'll put that back on there. And then all I do with these, as a lot of things have gone on over the years, it's pretty well, if you've got a lot of oil leaks underneath the car, the oil's going to end up inside the servo. So there's no point in trying to glue this up and put all kinds of rubber and everything. Over the past years, we found that the best thing to do is to just to take some insulating tape, some black plastic tape, and just wind it around. Like so. I just give it two, two, co uh, two layers all the way around. I'll turn it over so that you can see the other side. And you can see that the tape has run over the lip like so. So I'll bring it back because we're going to fit the clip. But before we do that, you need to understand where the clip has to be. The servo rods lay like this with the two rods going back to the master cylinder there. So as the servo winds up and, and moves around, this clip also moves. So the clip must be in a position 
so that it doesn't strike the top of the chassis or the cross member for the rear of the gearbox. So we have to position the clip at the front of the servo, like so, so that it, it can go, when it winds up, it can go there, and when it's in reverse, it can go there, and give us a position so that it doesn't touch the chassis and make noises or pull the clip around. So we're going to position the uh, servo clip at this point, and we'll just tighten the screw just a little bit. All we're doing is putting a, a small amount of pressure on the cover. We don't want to drive the clip into the cover so that when the servo lining is turning, it wears the cover away. Pull it up right up to the lip. We'll just give it a final squeeze. And what we've managed to do there is to tighten it up without driving this part of the clip into the cover. And that's the servo rebuilt. It's ready to go on the car. So we're going to fit the master cylinder now. We're going to pick up the push rod, put it inside the rubber. And then we're going to put the fitting in. The first thing to do is to get the fitting in. And then we'll need to screw that all the way in. If you leave it and tighten the bracket up, you'll have a much more difficult time getting the fitting to start. So we tighten the fitting up. And we'll fit the bracket. We'll put two bolts through. Drop it down. Offer it up to the holes. We'll get ourselves a nut and a spring washer on the inside. Got the front ones are very tight, it's very close to the chassis, so you have to push the, the bolt in. Do the same with this one. We'll go on to another one. Push that in. So we'll put this front bolt, the front bracket bolt in and lift it up, put the washer, put the nut, and dip that up. So that gives us all those bolts. So we'll put the bracket up, slip the nuts off. Now we'll put our actuating arm up. We'll spread the bracket just a little bit. Work it through. Now washer and nut on. So now we can tie it all our, tighten up all our bolts. And that's the master cylinder attached to the chassis. We're now ready to fit the servo. Now we're going to fit the servo. We're going to put it on the three pins that stick out of the transmission. We're going to be careful not to damage our spring plate. Put it up. 
work it away, work it through. Rotate it. Work it through there. Now we've got to pick up the three pins, which we did. And we're going to rotate. Which we've got. So we can put our bolt through. So we'll tighten up the centre bolt. Just check that you're still on your pins. Your pins haven't moved. There we go. You put a great deal of pressure on that bolt, make it very tight. We're ready now to put the actuating rods on. And that's the rod from the pedal and the rod to the compensator. So this is quite a difficult job on these cars because they use clevis pins and you should by rights put the clevis pin from the inside. The head of the clevis pin should be on the inside with the two split pins on the outside. That was how they were originally. A lot of times people put them in with the heads on there and put the split pins in but it's uh, there's a chance that they can uh, jam up so we're going to do it the right way. So we've put the pin in the pedal rod and now we're going to try and spread the two actuating levers. Okay, I've spread the two levers. And I'm going to try and put the clevis pin through the two levers. Like so. Now we have to put the other lever in. So we're going to push the second pin in, like so. Now what we have to do is put the split pins or collar pins in. So now we need to bend those over and however you can do it, I prefer to use these long pins and work them around. Now we're going to fit the master cylinder rods to the servo. Put the horseshoe on, up the bottom. brought the rod in from the back side of the car. We put our pin through the eye of the rod and into the arm of the lever. And then we put a horseshoe clip and then the bolt into the rod to secure it all. And we're now going to rotate the servo so that we can put our second rod on. So we put our rod in to our arm, our servo arm. We put the clevis pin through the horseshoe clip on and secured it with the bolt. Now we're going to rotate it back so that we can put the bolt in the master cylinder actuating lever. So we're going to put the bushing into the two rods like so. We're going to put the two spacers on either side. We're going to bring the rod forwards So, and then we're going to pass our bolt through the, and we're going to put a washer and a nut on the bolt, and we'll tighten that up. Now we've got the master cylinder rods joined to the servo and we need to adjust the servo now. So we'll loosen the lock nut on the end of the servo and have your assistant turn the wheel until the servo starts to spin. Turn the wheel please. Okay. The servo started to pick up there, so now what we'll do is we'll loosen the servo off by two flats. One, two. That's freed up the servo, so we'll take the locking nut in to the adjusting nut. Okay, now we'll tighten the locking nut against the 
adjusting nut. Hold the adjusting nut and lock the locking nut. And that's the servo adjusted. jack the car down and obviously we can't do it but the next step would be to road test the car and check for leaks. Good luck with your project and we'll see you on the next show. For more information on other programs in this series or upcoming technical seminars please contact us at the number on your screen. the amount of travel at the brake pedal. So we're going to remove as much of the free play as we can. We're going to pull against the, against the rods. We push with our thumb here and we check to see whether or not the pin will line up. 
So we push in, take away all that free play. And we slip the pin in. Once we're happy with, with that, if we uh, felt we we're pulling too much, we can take this rod and we can adjust it like so by the adjustment through there. Or we can take it in and shorten the adjustment like so. It's a good idea to take away all of the free play and I even take a tapered punch and pull against the linkage. This gives us a really good pedal and uh, it makes a difference. So this is where we do the adjustment. And that's the rods adjusted. seen us we've completed the left rear wheel we went on and we did the right rear wheel we're now going to do the front I'm going to fit the backing plate to the stub axle and the hoses to the bracket on the shock absorbers I'm going to put the lock tab and the bolt to wiggle it around a little bit Get the bolt started. So we get all the bolts in, we can tighten them up. Once we've got those tight, we can bend the lock tabs back up. We're now ready to put our hoses in. What I'm going to do is the same as before. I'm going to just start the, the locking nut, the nut that holds the hose to the bracket. And what we do at this point is we get this hose in a good position for uh, the shape as the wheel turns back and forth. This hose needs to have an arc up towards the bracket, like so. And then we'll double check the line, the fitting. That's that done. You need to, as I said earlier, you need to do that one. And then we'll do this one after. Once again, taking the locking nut in. And while I've still got plenty of movement, I'll bring the, the pipe fitting to it. Start that. So I'll take the locking nut now in, make sure that my uh, hoses are uniform, they're both the same, that point, and I'm going to lock up the fitting. Everything's tight there. For the purpose of demonstration, I'm going to put the shoes on now. This is going to show you how the hole in the back of the shoe goes onto the uh, post, the adjusting post for the shoe. Once again, we take the lining, pull the spring around, 
for that in. Take my pliers at this end of the shoe. On the post. You can see that slides down. Push that all the way back down so that the drum will go on. We may have to encourage that back a little more yet. We take the bottom one, push this, pull the spring towards you, put the spring through the hole. Pick up the post. Watch the movement there as the friction washers come through and uh, that's the shoes on. I'm going to have to put the hub on now although I can see the shoes are too far out so I think I'm going to let them in. It will give you an opportunity to see them move. You can see the shoe coming in or going away from me towards the backing plate using a screwdriver and that's basically the adjustment. Gonna do the same with the top one. The shoe's going in towards the backing plate there. And we're probably enough now. We'll put the hub together. So it's very, very important that we force grease right through the rollers on the wheel bearing, so we're going to keep punching the grease into the bearing. You can see it coming through there, through the rollers, and then we know that the grease is right in there. Go all the way round, take the grease back out of the centre point there, and you can see the grease coming through the bearing. You can see we've packed that bearing. We'll take a small amount, put it around the outside. I'll place that on a clean rag. I'll take the, the outer bearing, which is a little smaller, but still very strong, heavy. And we'll punch some fresh grease into that. See that coming through. It's very important, as I said earlier, to get the grease into that bearing. Just spreading it on the outside doesn't cut it. The bearing will fail. And we'll spread that around. I'm going to put this beveled washer. You can see we have a bevel on the washer there and a bevel in here. Knock that bit of dirt out of there. We put the bevel in so the flat side is facing the bearing. We have an oil thrower, or a grease thrower, has a small thread in there instead of a seal, has a thread so as the, as the hub spins, any grease that comes out is forced back into the hub. Let's put the big bearing on the out, onto the inner, and then I'm going to put the thrower in there. So I bang the thrower into the hub, and the hub will slide on. through there. There's no point in packing a lot of grease inside the hub. It won't travel. If it does travel, the bearing's well and truly overheated, so there's no need to do that. We've got plenty of, plenty of grease in the bearing. Push the outer race on, and then we've got the washer. The washer has a, a, um, a tab in which to locate the slot. Again, well, as I told you when we took it off, it's left-hand thread, left-hand side of the car. And we're going to tighten the bearing <coughs> up. What we're going to do is take it in. We want to make the bearing fairly tight, 
You certainly don't want any play or any looseness. The heat transfers out through this, through the drum, through the hub. So if this bearing's loose, you're going to overheat the bearing. So we'll pull it in. If it's a new bearing, it needs to be somewhat tighter, but just because we've only packed these. We've uh, got the cotter pin or split pin. You can see I've twisted this split pin, and the reason for doing that is when we put it into the hole, it allows the legs to come back around. Inside the dust cover, there's a static electricity grounding arrangement, and you can see that somebody's taken this one off, and that's because they bend the lock tab, or the split pin, I should say, back on itself and to there, and that causes that to break off, and that's what's happened there. So I've bent this around. <coughs> we'll take this like so. That's that. Gentle pressure. And that's the uh, hub built. Now we're going to true up the brake linings, or the brake shoes, I should say. You can see down through there, the, uh, the gap along that edge there is pretty even. And we'll try this one here. They're pretty good there. And we're pretty... We could let the top one in just a little bit too. We're going to take a deep socket and we'll tighten up the lock nuts. Now that I've adjusted the shoes for the position on the drum, I'm going to put the grommets in the backing plate and they're just slipped in. That completes that. So now we're ready to sand the inside of the drum and fit the drum to the hub. So we'll break the glaze on the drum. Tap the dirt out of it, then we can fit it to the hub. We'll fit our screws tighten our screws up so now we're ready to complete the other side and then we'll be ready to bleed the brakes Brakes, connect a rubber tube to the bleed nipple, undo the bleed nipple and have your assistant pump the master cylinder lever forwards until you remove all the air from the system. Could you pump please? When all the air stopped coming, you can close off the nipple the sequence for doing this is to bleed the left rear brake first, then the right rear, then we're going to bleed the front cylinder on the left and the front cylinder on the right. This will have bled the large master cylinder. When you've done that, you're then going to bleed the low bleed nipple on the left cylinder and then the low bleed nipple on the right cylinder and that will bleed the small master cylinder and that's the sequence you do for bleeding the brakes well that's it we're ready to jack the car down and road test the car good luck with your project remember it's a complicated one so follow all the steps carefully and we look forward to seeing you at the next program for more information on other programs in this or upcoming technical seminars, please contact us at the number on your screen.